The phrase fake news gets thrown around a whole lot, and it has a couple different meanings. To mainstream journalists, it usually means overtly false information. Somebody has made it up and published it. But to a lot of other people, it means hyper-partisan content, biased information meant to mislead you, whether intentionally misleading you or maybe someone's just really bad at their job and they're biased. There's one company that's cutting through the bias, and that's a pun, because this company is called The Knife Media. And I had a chance to sit down with a couple people who are running The Knife Media to learn about how they determine bias and distortions from mainstream news. So without further ado, here's the interview. How's it going, everybody? I am here at LibertyCon. This is the this is the first LibertyCon, right? The first LibertyCon, yes. Sure Hi, yeah. Tim. And this is the Knife Media. Hello. Hello. Guys. We're gonna be we're gonna be talking about bias in media. All right. First, let me. I guess uh, I did a video. We we did a recording with Dave Rubin, and that's going to be tomorrow. And I think we're gonna say some of the some of some similar things as we introduce LibertyCon. But I, this is the first LibertyCon, and I think this is like a, it's like a libertarian convention. Is that appropriate? Well, I think it's people that just uh, understand uh, the importance of freedom in our society, right? And that's what we believe it is. That's what we believe. We're not representatives of the conference, but we're here to meet, find people such as. Yeah, yeah, just whatever. I guess the perception is. Yeah. You know, so let's let's talk about what you do, and you should just say it. Just tell me what you do. So we're the Knife Media. We were founded in 2014 with a mission to bring scientific standards to the media, to journalism. So we got together, a group of people got together concerned about bias in the media, concerned about spin and ways that information is being distorted from its, from its facts, from its true obje objectivity. And we had a question. The question was, can we apply the scientific method to journalism? Because science is the thing that humanity has that's closest to objective truth. It's what helps us get the closest to actually understanding our, our, our world and our reality. And we started to see a lot of distortions going on in the media, and we thought, if we could bring science to media, we could solve a lot of these problems. So we did case studies, we did studies, we did practice and work and development of a model for about two years on this, and then the knife was born. And so last year we launched our site. We have a group of 20 analysts, writers, and editors who do two main things, well, three main things. One, we strip the news of bias and spin and just present people with the facts. That's it, just fact-based news. And it may sound simple, but it's surprisingly refreshing, and people are really surprised by the difference between reading just facts and reading what we usually get in the media. Then we have a process of rating mainstream media for their level of bias and spin and lack of logic. So you could go to the media outlets that you read or, or watch and, and to be able to tell which ones are more objective and which ones are more biased before you watch them. And then the third thing we do is we analyze them and write analyses that help people understand those distortions and those biases so they can be better critical thinkers when they read the news. Well, I think you just brought something up interesting because um, I've been to your site a few times and isn't the analysis, the editorial, you just making another site with another biased opinion, but this time focused on the media? Do you want to take that one? Well, you could say it's, there. it is an opinion. I, I definitely think we write opinion in our analysis, but the difference has to do with that it's based on the ratings and it's based on the objective scientific process that we take the information. Uh, so I think that, that there's a, a little bit of a difference, you know, opinion that's informed opinion. Um, but yes, it definitely is opinion. And you know, we're not against opinion. We believe that opinion is great, but we want to ma make sure that we separate opinion from fact. And our mission has to do to inform people on the difference between facts and opinion so that they're in their own process they can also understand. Many people believe that their opinion is reality, and that's not the case. Yeah. And we're here to <laughs> teach people, hey, let's figure out what we can all come come together and understand reality as is, and then on top of that, we can all have different opinions, and that's great. What, so what I, what I really like about what you guys do is, on, on the website, there's like a rating for articles and stories, and there's actually like a big list of all the different outlets. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but you had one story told by several different outlets, and you ranked each of them on how they reported the one story. Is that, mm -hmm. that's? Yeah, every day we do a full analysis, at least one a day. And what we do is we take a team of 10 people and put them on one story, we choose four different news outlets, and they analyze the spin, the slant, the logic, the accuracy, and then they come up with a final rating for based on our, our process and our, our formulas of which ones were more objective, and you can, you can see the numbers. 
So, what, what's what, what's your background for both of you? Go for it. I'll go first. I'm a journalist. I, I, I um, cut my teeth in, in mainstream traditional media. I was a Bloomberg correspondent for three years in Latin America. Uh, I wrote for the New York Times for three years, and I wrote for Time Magazine for three years. Um, and after those eight or nine years, I, I, I mean, it was an amazing time. I, I had a wonderful, wonderful opportunities, wonderful mentors, but I was increasingly concerned with what I saw as we weren't being as objective as we could, and I thought that our main mission every day was to write stories that got clicks and got readers more than can I be the best objective, scientific, you know, minded journalist possible. That wasn't really in the conversation, and I wanted to do something to change that. And um, came together with a group of wonderful go. people, and we did it. What about you? Well, I also come from the journalist world. Um, I'm from Mexico, and uh, my family owns uh, Grupo Reforma, which has uh, many different publications, newspapers in Mexico. And, uh, you know, I, I really had a, a, I've had an amazing experience just understanding the power of media, the power that uh, we can do with information and in transforming our society. So when I moved to the United States in 2008, um, actually because of the violence, the wave of violence that was my country was experimenting, uh, I saw the problems in the United States, the mainstream media, how politicized and biased it was, and I couldn't believe it. And you know, uh, we got together with a group of people that had the same type of concerns and that wanted to do a difference, uh, understanding the power of information. So I think this is interesting. Um, I guess, is it safe to say that you're both mainstream journalists? Is that is that fair? By training. By training. Yes. Not not anymore. Right now, you you yes. you we come from that world. For right, sure. right. So, I know a lot of people who refuse. Like they, they, I don't I don't know how, I don't know how to describe the, the factions involved in this cultural war, or whatever. But people on the left who are just like, oh, the mainstream media does a great job, and they just don't want to believe that they're going to get things wrong, when they do, or or and not necessarily that it's wrong, but that it's biased in a way that maybe paints the wrong picture. So I'm wondering is. I guess a lot of the rhetoric, do you think it's correct that, you sort of said this already, but you're talking about the distortions of the mainstream media. Do you think it's maybe as bad as a lot of people think it is? You know, I don't know how to frame this correctly, but you know, I look at some of the, the stories and it's like, I think CNN got like a 26% mm -hmm. score on like one of the stories they did. Yeah. That's kind of scary when you think that CNN is, a, is, a, is like the main source for so many people. How, is, it, is it as bad as you think it? Like how bad do you think it is? How would we'll say that? Well, at times it's 26 out of 100. I mean, that, that that is what we're measuring there is what percentage of an article or a news report is objective and data-based and fact-based versus distorted in some way. And yes, that is that is happening. And I think what, what happens is that a certain narrative is reinforced over and over again, it, depending on different topics, but we tend to stay within a certain narrative. And it doesn't inspire us to be critical thinkers. You know, and, and that's not good for our society. You know, we want to be able to, to, to inspire that, to foment that, think outside the box, think challenge, see multiple perspectives. Usually one given news story, we have a, one of our measures called slant. Our measures, do they consider just one perspective, one point of view, or multiple? And most stories just stay within one. But if we're able to look at all sides of a debate in one news report, that will enrich our understanding both of what we believe and what we don't believe and what we'll be able to solve problems better. So when you ask, is it bad? I think it's bad in the sense that it keeps us from solving the problems that are, that are harming our society because we can't get out of that certain way of thinking. Yeah, and, and the media contributes to that. It's not the only thing, but it's one. And the interesting thing is, you know, what are the stories that are more distorted, or the stories that are more more people are emotionally vested on? And that's part of, like, I think it's part of our mission is to really teach people how to think critically, because the media is only the result of us. You know, we create the media and the quality of thinking that we have as a society, and we have to earn better media. But we start with us. So I believe that as mo the more that we become less emotional, more critical, and more able to, as Jens was saying understand different perspectives, the more we will be able to have a, a common ground and, and find agreements and ways of exchange that is more civilized and less, uh, I would say, uh, primitive as we are right now. One, one thing too, uh, just to follow up on what you said, I, I think there's a tendency also though, especially right now, that people seem more and more kind of fed up with traditional media outlets to blame them and go, oh, they're the problem, you know, it's, it's CNN or if you don't like, it's Fox, whoever side you're on. But really, 
most journalists uh, are, are very skilled and they get into the profession, I think, because they want to do a good thing. That's why I got into it. Most of my friends who are still in these outlets, they're there for that reason. I don't think, I think some people think there's like, they pick up a red phone, and, you know, they call the CIA or whoever, and that's the narrative you're going to do. Operation, you know? uh, <laughs> Operation Mockingbird was when the, the CIA infiltrated news organizations. Yeah, and, and, I, and I'm sure it, 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 it's happened and it happens, but I think more prevalent than that is just, it's a human problem, and I think we have a lack of awareness as people about our own biases. And we're not trained for that. Like when we don't learn that in college, we don't learn it certainly in, in news organizations. Like you don't learn how to separate yourself from your own beliefs and report and write outside of that. And so I think a lot of times we just get stuck and we don't see it and we get super sensational and dramatic because that's the world we're in. We just gotta l teach people and learn how to do it differently. So on the site, there was, um, I think it's, you know, like the five headlines for the day. Is that is that correct? That's or one thing, one, one th uh, yeah, just one thing that you do. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I noticed um, that there was a couple right-wing sites, a couple left-wing sites, some mainstream media. And I'm like, okay. So if they're willing to say like, hey, we're critical of this, like, and point out the, the emotional and biased slanted language in the left and the right, I'm like, okay, that's a good start because that's cutting through the bias. But how do I know that you're actually coming up with a real scientific you know, reason for why you're rating these is there a methodology to how you can determine the actual score? You know, is, is, is it an opinion when you look at a piece and say this is 26% or is no. there there's actual facts oh and God. methodology? Rosa Laura is the master at our methodology <laughs> with the ratings. We, so we all are and, and we've been beautifully mentored. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of people that have participated in developing this, but no, there's every word, every sentence, every single paragraph uh, of, our, of, any of any communication is really uh, understood for the, the how the logical constructions that are implied or stated for the slant, you know, how many perspectives and for the, the objectivity of the language. And we have all sorts of distinctions and guidelines that are objective in that different people, different analysts can take the same piece of information and the result will be exactly the same. Meaning it's reproducible, it's scientific, and that's part of the value that we offer. I think that nobody else has been able to quantify and measure information the way that we do it. Now, it'll be changing and constantly we have to make it better for sure, but um, it's as best as we can do. So let me let me let me see if I can simplify this with a quick analogy. And yes. correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm I'm going to tell you how I see it based on what you've told me. Yes. A fact would be a dog crashed into a fence. The fence broke. Mm -hmm. And with that sentence, uh, everybody can read it and understand the same thing happened. But then would a so again correct me if I'm wrong. Would a bias story then be a disgusting cur? vandalized <laughs> property, that would present a different kind of narrative. Is exactly. that kind of how you see the difference? Like Absolutely. There you're importing intent, you're importing language that's very subjective, that really brings up people's emotions, and ultimately that's not measurable. You know, in science you measure everything, and words can actually talk about things that are objectively measurable or not, and we strive for objectivity and measurement. So yes, that's an extra excellent uh, example. Is there, is, is so I was, yeah, I was. Maybe you should come work with us. <laughs> <laughs> You're I, welcome, huh? But I, no, I, you know, honestly, um, I'm I'm fascinated by what you guys do because I've seen a, f uh, a few instances of people sharing the knife media, essentially calling out mainstream journalists and being like, "Here, like, read this." And when I went, when I when I checked it out, actually, so for those that are watching. Um, Dave Rubin mentioned that you guys were here and I was excited because I'm like, oh, this is really great. I was actually reading your site earlier today, totally independent of, of being told that you guys were here. To, and, and actually, I'm talking to Emily, who's, who's sitting over there, you can't see her. And I was like, we need, we need to like learn from what you guys are doing when we even do it. Because I don't think I'm perfect. I think I'm far from perfect. But I just try to, I try to be fair as much as I can. Seeing the rating systems, and I, I, I think the only concern I have is what I just mentioned, is trusting that should I trust you, that your rating systems are good? Because everyone says they're telling the truth. You know, CNN claims to be the most trusted name in news, yes. but just, I believe today- Fox is fair and balanced. Exactly, and- And, <laughs> and uh, democracy dies in darkness at the Washington Post. Right. <laughs> we, <laughs> they all have them. So I guess, um, let me just ask you one final question. Why should anyone trust you 
and your methodology over any other news source. I mean, we're pretty transparent. You know, you can go, if you're a subscriber on our site, uh, you can go and you can see what we call the technical sheets, and the technical sheets tell you how we're rating, you know, what words we're counting as spin, what type of, what, what is slant, how do we, do we measure slant? So, you know, you may, we're open to feedback. If people believe that, you know, this is measured too harshly or this, that, we're open to feedback and, uh, you know, being able to adjust, but the reality is we're very transparent with our rating system, uh, and as, as we said, it's based on the scientific measure uh, method. So, uh, you know, uh, we're open to any feedback, I guess. There's also, a yes, you can go to the technical sheet and you can see exactly how we rated each article. Um, and then there's also just the experience of reading an article. So we have our ratings and our analysis, which was the opinion part that Rosalara was talking about. And then we have what we call the raw data, which is our news section, which is news stripped of spin and bias. I think it's pretty much like an obvious experience when you read those articles that it's different from regular news. You're like, wait, where, where's the, what did you call it? The, the disgusting cur that's not yeah. there. You the know? word dog versus the word disgusting cur. <laughs> yes. But you see that in you know mainstream news. Yeah, yeah. They'll, you know, uh, one of the articles I think that was on said that uh, someone got a, a, a courtside seat to the Trump arena, which is like not a fact in any way. It doesn't tell me anything. But you can you can see that they're trying to paint a picture of like this crazy circus and someone sitting up front like hooting. Like people imagine things when you say courtside seats. They imagine things when you call it an arena, right? I'm gonna read you one push notification I got today. As the White House strains under the same chaos that drives President Trump, disarray and confusion rule. I have no idea what that means. That's a push <laughs> notification. Neither do we. That's <laughs> news. From who? Do you want to you don't want to call them out? <laughs> you know, they can they can go to our we actually tweeted it. You can go look and find out who it was. But at the knife media. At the knife, we would strip any sentence of spin and, and then give the fact database version. In this one, there really isn't a database <laughs> version except for Trump is the president and maybe he's in the White House. Like that's all you can do. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what I did. I didn't understand. Um, I think the 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 most I could whittle it down is. Uh, confusion in the White, a potential confusion in the White House. Maybe. What's confusion? It's subjective. I know. It's I know. Yeah. Who's I, confused? Who's I, confused? I have no idea. Is the, is the reporter confused? Is Trump confused? You read and that. I just didn't know it. Even know what it meant. And you know, but. ideally, we want people. And you know, why should they trust us? Ideally, when people go to our site, they leave being better critical thinkers and really having an experience that we're not telling them how to think. We're just teaching how. Uh, not telling them what to think, but how to think better and more perspective. So ideally, you know, when, when you're told exactly how you should be feeling, what types of conclusions you should be making, you have to be careful. But when you're giving data and allow for a space so that you can actually think for yourself and get your own conclusions, I think then that's a more trustworthy. And final so, thing on that, ultimately we have a mission. We're very a very mission-oriented company and we want to better, we want the world to be better. And the world will be better if people can make better decisions and, and be and have an understanding and perception of the world that's as close to what's actually going on as possible. And that will foster better decision making and ultimately a better place because we'll understand what's going on. And if we can help people do that just a little more in their own lives, we, that's what we're trying to do. So. so here's what I'll say. Don't trust them, <laughs> and don't, but let me finish, entirely. And you shouldn't trust me entirely. And you should take a look at what they've said Take a look at the knife media. Is it theknifemedia.com? Theknifemedia.com. There you yes. go. And judge for yourself. If you guys have the sheets and you're transparent about it, and people can see that, I think it's it, that's worthy of people's trust. Yes. But the first thing to do is vet you on there. Is to vet your organization and what you do on their own. And send us feedback. We want all the feedback, please. That's how we build, you know, objective news. People, all, everybody participating because the news is out there. The news is with us, and we all have it. So it's we want I, participation. I think one of the most important things anyone can do is be a little bit more skeptical towards all news organizations. Yes. But I do think what you guys do is, is great, and that's my opinion. But again, I don't, want to, I don't want to blanket like, you guys are better than everyone else. I want to let people know that they should judge for themselves, but I, but I personally do think that you guys are doing some good work. So do you have any final thoughts? We're very grateful for to just meet you and be here with you, Tim. Thank you for oh, inviting thank, us. Oh, thank you. I mean, I'm excited for what you're doing, I think. You know, look, uh, maybe, maybe there's another final thought I can say is that I've constantly looked at how do you solve the problem of fake news. Snopes is not the answer. Uh, I, Snopes gets so, so many things wrong and they, it's not scientific. It's, it's, 
so much is omitted from many of their stories. Sometimes it's okay, sometimes it's not. It's not perfect. It's just another site claiming to be reporting the news and they don't always get it right. When I look at what you guys are doing and I'm like, you can actually see the highlighted language and you can see like a percentage, this percentage of the article was actually deemed you know, slanted and emotionally driven language. Or when you read that push notification that literally means nothing, I'm like, okay, this is actually someone cutting out specific things and showing us what percentage of this, you know, this uh, write-up is emotionally charged, subjective, or just a straight effect. So I like that. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, and, and news alerts like that, they also, they also pr promote a lot of fear a lot of alarm in, in the population and we don't, we don't want that we don't need more of that i think we've got enough of that so when you strip out that meaning you go oh wait it might not be that bad that's, yeah. that's better for all of us i think yes yeah right on thank so, you for for sitting down and talking um thank you do you have a do you want to mention your twitter account or anything in particular yeah so our site is thenightmedia.com which you said and twitter is at the knife media excellent yeah. thank you both so much See everybody there yeah thank you so thank you all for hanging out. I think this is great. LibertyCon has been fun so far. But uh, make sure to follow me on Twitter at TimCast for updates and breaking news. Stay tuned. New videos every day at 4 p.m. And tomorrow we have a, a long discussion with Dave Rubin, which is a lot of fun. So tune to that, and I will see you all then. Yeah.